So you hear he's showing that X-Gene 1 and 2 is much higher performance than the Intel servers. Right. So these are hooked up as a benchmark right here. Right, yes. So these are running what's called the, the work benchmark, WRK. And it's a benchmark that's very similar to Apache Bench, where it measures a web server performance when clients are sending requests to a web server. Very similar to what a conventional web server that is being run by Google or Yahoo or Bing or any, any data center vendor would do. So the systems that we're showing uh, for benchmark comparison are the Xgene 1. So this is a four node system with four Xgene 1s and a half width chassis and a one new form factor. And uh, here is the Xgene 2 based chassis, very similar form factor. So we have six chips here and a half width form factor right. and two half width for one new. So this is a similar board that we have with Xgene 1 and Xgene 2. And on the comparison side, we have this three families from Intel. The E5-2630, which is a Sandy Bridge platform. The V2, which is the Ivy Bridge platform, 22 nanometer from Intel. And the Haswell, which is the V3. So the, when you run the benchmark here, you can see it on the screen here. So the benchmark itself is work. So we see the requests per second and thousands. So thousands of requests per second. And uh, the latency is in milliseconds. And the throughput is in gigabits per second. And there are four 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, connections to each server. So there's 40 gigabits going in total for a total throughput. And uh, you can kind of see the performance here. So this is actually in one at 829, a uh, little over one gig here. And then 456, 521 and 766. So you can see that the XG1 performance is uh, greater than the latest and greatest from Intel, which is the Haswell platform at 766. And XG2 uh, is just a uh, next... Uh that's the right. next level. Right. So, uh, how about this? This is the Xgene 2? Yeah, this is the Xgene 2 based uh, evaluation board uh, that we use internally for bring up. And uh, this brings out all the interfaces on the Xgene 2 platform. And uh, so, on the front panel, we see four uh, UART connections and two 10 gigabit Ethernet that are integrated into one single SOC. And uh, you see the four DDR channels here. So, there are eight slots total. So, two DIMMs per channel, eight DIMMs total. Wow. And here is the SOC itself. So it supports up to 256 gigabytes of memory. Uh, there is one PCI by 8 connector. And uh, there are six SATA ports that are uh, Gen 3 integrated into the SOC. I'm moving this around to the other side here. Uh, here are some of the slower speed peripherals to SDIO ports. And uh, there is the ATX connector for power supply. And uh, that's pretty much it. There are some standard ARM debug connectors for debugging here. Yeah. And uh, there is also additional extensions for fans and stuff. So, uh, what do you do? So, mostly? yeah. So, my name is uh, Kumar Shankaran. And I'm the Director of uh, Platform and Software Engineering at Applied Micro. And I'm responsible for all the software and platforms at Applied Micro. So, uh, what's the software support right now? Yeah, so the software support, uh, I also handle ecosystem enablement. So the software support comes uh, typically comes with Linux. So we bundle full Linux, uh, open source, and uh, whatever changes we make for Linux are pushed upstream into open source kernel.org. And uh, that is what is used by all uh, data center customers or distro vendors like Red Hat and Ubuntu. So we have Red Hat uh, with uh, RHEL available on ARM V8 today. And Ubuntu 14.04 LTS is uh, supporting Xgene and is commercially available today. In addition, on the embedded side, uh, we have support from Wind River and Monte Vista. Uh, they have for commercial support announced for the Xgene family of products. Wind River is very nearby here, right? That's right. Wind River was in the same building, now it's moved to Alameda. So, it's no longer in the same building. Uh, let's look at this over there. This, uh, this, what's going on with all these hard drives there? Yeah. So this is a design that we did with Dell. So Dell announced this platform at the ARM TechCon a few weeks back. So this is a uh, cold storage design with uh, Xgene 1. So there are two boards here, again in a 1U form factor, and uh, there are 16, 12 directly attached disks. So there are 6 disks per node, so two nodes here, and there are 12 disks in a directly attached storage fashion uh, to each XG node. And in addition, we can have a mezzanine exp expansion card that's connected to PCIe that adds another 16 disks to this entire chassis here. So you can have a 2U chassis with 16 disks on 1U, and then these additional 12 disks on the second U. So that's uh, a, that's 12, 28. That's correct, yes. So 28 disks in a 2U storage. And it's mainly used for Hadoop, cold storage for storing all your videos, pictures, uh, online storage and all that. That is very, very, very useful today. So uh, 
So this is like uh, extreme storage cloud or enterprise. Or, That's or, right. Yes, yeah, cloud storage or enterprise storage. Yeah, mainly used for, as I mentioned, videos, photos, and uh, all kinds of online storage. What kind of software support do you do for that kind of solution? Yeah, for this one, it, they again use commercially available software, mainly from Red, Red Hat. And uh, we start off with giving them Applied Micro Linux, which is open source Linux. And then uh, from a commercial support point of view, they use Red Hat Enterprise Linux for, for their production platform. And uh, then they run benchmarks like Ceph or ClusterFS or some, some benchmarks that are mainly in the storage domain. So how about the support for Linux on the XGene 2? Compared right. to one, what's the difference? That's right. So the XGene 2 platform, as uh, we just have, we are sampling the silicon today. So on the XGene 2 platform, we have Applied Micro Linux supported today, and we are working with the, our standard partners, Red Hat and Canonical, for having commercial support on this platform. And we expect to have that sometime towards the first half of next year. So what kind of uh, uh, new things do you have to do to support the new chip? That's right. So that's a good question. So when we go from one silicon vendor to the uh, uh, one silicon version to the other silicon version or one family to the other family, which is XGene 1 to XGene 2, uh, we have to add support for the, the features that are new in this architecture. So one new thing that we added was Rocky, which is RDMA or converged Ethernet. And for that, we have to add support in the driver and in the Linux kernel to be able to support that hardware. The rest of the stuff is pretty seamless. It uh, is compatible between XGene 1 and XGene 2. So what kind of work do you do with Linaro? Linaro, yeah. So we are founding members of Linaro Enterprise Group. And I sit on the technical steering committee mem member as a technical steering committee member for LEG and LNG. So Linaro Enterprise Group and Linaro Networking Group. And on the LEG side, uh, we push uh, very heavy features like uh, KVM, on the virtualization perspective, and on the networking side, we do things like big Indian compilers, and uh, the real-time real patch in Linux, and uh, NetMap, and the UIO, and those, those features that are more suitable for our networking customers than the data center customers. So what, what kind of, uh, um, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, how much has been achieved so far, would you say? Uh, what's, what's been the, the achievements with yeah, Linaro? So yeah, so one of the biggest achievements has been the completion of KVM as a hypervisor and uh, the initial development and the full support for uh, virtualization on the CPU side was heavily done on the XGene platform and that was done by Linaro and the APM assignees within LEG. And uh, so that is at a point of completion at this point and uh, going forward they'll be extending that to IO virtualization which moves the entire uh, virtualization to include IOs which is the PCIe and the networking subsystem that we have in XGene. So definitely a huge amount of innovation happening with the ARM server industry in that you are uh, leading. That's right, yeah. So as, as we mentioned, we are the founding members of LEG and it's very important for us to seed the ecosystem so all the customers uh, have all the, the basic pieces of software that they need to have uh, any kind of deployment within their data centers. So it's ready, people can just order and deploy. Yes, exactly. So we have these commercial software available today. The platform is available commercially and the silicon is also available in production. So uh, this is the software demo, right? Yes. So uh, what we're showing here is just the, the Linux boot prompt. And this is on the XGene 1 platform. So that's the one that's running right here. And this is the board. And we're connected over the serial console. So what I'm here is on the serial console for the Linux CLI. And this is on one of the nodes on that uh, XGene 1 platform that you just saw a few seconds back. So uh, I'm just going to look at the, the host name first. So as I mentioned, uh, this is running the Linux 3.12 kernel. So here you can see the version of the Linux kernel. And uh, this is the open source version that I was talking to you about. So we are within Applied Micro, we are at the Linux kernel version 3.12. And this was built on uh, the 22nd of August. Uh, for the uh, for the demo and uh, now we'll just look at the cores here so we'll see eight cores running yeah so uh, when i did this i'm just typing the cpu info on this platform and let me scroll up here so you can kind of see this it's an ar64 cpu and uh, it's an apm xg mustang board running at 2.4 gigahertz so each cpu is running at 2.4 gigahertz and there are eight CPUs total, as you can see from this list here. So it's running SMP, and there are eight CPUs running in uh, each at 2.4 gigahertz. So how's your SMT support? So there's full SMT support. It's uh, fully coherent, and we have a coherent fabric within the device that uh, enables coherency across the caches and the fabric. 
and uh, so all the CPUs can see the other guy's caches. So they're fully coherent, and that's how, that's how they support SMP. So um, uh, software developers uh, making uh, uh, applications for the cloud need to take into account how to optimize for SMP and, and your type of SMP, or not necessarily. So standard Linux SMP, it's a feature that is there as part of the Linux kernel, and there is nothing specific that needs to be done for Xgene. So it's the standard Linux SMP feature that is supported by Xgene. All right. So this, these are the kinds of the demos you can show here, and uh, it's just like, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, right, so this is a serial console for Linux, and uh, on, on one of the nodes, and if you go to the other node, this, this is the other node, and uh, this shows the, the CPU utilization while we're running the benchmark. So uh, once, once we run the benchmark, you can actually see the, uh, the CPU utilization. So here, let me just run this here. One. And what this is going to do is it's going to measure the CPU utilization while we're running the benchmark over there on the other screen. So we'll do that live here. And we'll also measure the power live. So we're going to do all these things in one shot here. So let me just first uh, run the CPU utilization here. Here we go. So it will update it every single second. And right now we're not running anything. So you can see the CPU is pretty much idle. So it's 100% idle. Nothing is running on this platform right now. And if you look at the power here, so the power is about close to 50 watts. And now let's go to the... Uh, we'll run the if you can focus on that screen over there. Yeah. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to run the benchmark here by clicking the run button. Okay. And uh, what we'll do is while the benchmark is running, we'll uh, look at the, the performance number here. And then we'll also look at the power number live. Okay. So, one second. So let me just run the benchmark there. Okay. So while you're running the benchmark here, it takes about 20 seconds to run the benchmark. And now we can focus on the power here. So this is measuring the power live here. So you can kind of see there's about 200, about 210 watts. And if you focus here very quickly here, so this screen, you can see the idle has gone almost to zero, which means that the CPU is utilized almost 100%. So the CPU, so while it's running the benchmark, now it's done. So the test is over, and the CPU now again idle. You can focus on the power again to come back to a low number. And now if you go back to that screen over there, we just finished the run here and you can see the new number 786. So we ran this right now and we got the number of 786. Still better than the Intel performance of so, Haswell. So what more can be done in software to optimize things further? Yeah, so there's a lot of work going on to improve the overall performance of the networking subsystem or PCIe and the native Ethernet that we have on Xgene. So a lot of work is going on in terms of performance optimization still. All right. and. Uh, uh, so there's all these uh, special features of combining everything into the chip. Okay. All that is working. Yeah. Like the networking, the storage. That's right. So all that stuff is just perfect. Right. So what you just saw was a real-life benchmark. So I just ran, as I mentioned, the work benchmark, which is very similar to Apache Bench. And uh, when you saw the CPU utilization when the benchmark was not running was uh, close to zero, meaning the CPU was not utilized at all. And when we ran the benchmark, it was close to being pegged at 100%. And uh, then we moved to the other screen where you saw the updated numbers of about 786,000 uh, requests per second during 20 seconds when the benchmark was being run. You so also have some kind of small kind of like co-processors? Yes, so we have co-processors that are used for a variety of assists. So for things like ACPI, for instance, power management, booting, uh, we have a processor internally. It's a Cortex M3. Uh, it's a 32-bit ARM. And that is uh, the one that comes out of power on first when the, the CPU is powered on. There's just one core of these. There's one core of that, yeah. So that handles ACPI, power management, booting, uh, boot device detection, and all that before the ARM V8 CPU is even let out of reset. And in addition, we have other uh, Cortex A5s that are used for inline acceleration for security, Ethernet optimization, MD5 checksum computation inline, and very high performance inline acceleration. So Cortex A5 is good for security? It's used for any inline acceleration, so it can be used for security, it can be used for packet processing, it can be used as a classifier, or any kind of application that would use a, a Lucasad engine, or anything that would need for deep packet inspection before any packet is being handed over to your main CPU. And Xgene 2 also has these kinds of extra That's cores? Right. Xgene, Xgene 2 also has uh, extra cores, mainly on the Cortex M3 for power management and ACPI functionality. Alright, so thanks a lot for the Thank software you. tour.